in the New Hampshire village of Brantford, the movie opened in 1869. Running out of breath, two lads are seen carrying a box, which they then bury in the forest. The scene then shifts to Brantford 100 years later. Alan Parrish, a young child being pursued by a group of bullies, seeks safety at his father's shoe factory. Alan meets Carl, a member of his father's staff who has developed a sneaker prototype that Carl believes will be the Parrish shoes brand's next big thing. His father catches Alan as he carelessly throws the prototype on a conveyor belt. Sam Parrish scolds his son for being the target of bullying and says that Alan needs to defend himself. Alan steps outside, and a machine in the factory starts making a grinding sound. The prototype was placed on a conveyor belt, and the conveyor belt sent the shoe into the machine, injuring both the machine and Carl's prototype. When Sam demands to know who caused the situation, Carl assigns Alan the blame. The bullies approach Alan outside the factory. One of them commands Alan to keep his girlfriend at a distance. In spite of Alan's insistence that he and the bully's girlfriend are just friends, they beat him up and took his bike. Alan is getting better when he hears an odd drum beat and is pulled to a building site. The box that the two lads had buried a century earlier lies wedged in a patch of earth. When Alan takes it out and opens it, he discovers a wooden board game called Jumanji inside. Alan's parents are attending a function that evening. Multiple bullies have been identified by Alan's mother and his father, who both express their pride in Alan for standing up to the bullies. Alan's expression quickly changes, though, when his father announces that they are sending him to a boarding school for boys. When Alan is made to do something he doesn't want to do, he becomes indignant and, together with his father, they split ways for the evening. After Alan's parents go, he makes an effort to run away from home by packing a suitcase. Alan answers the door to find Sarah Whittle, the bully's girlfriend, who has come to return Alan's bike as he prepares to leave the house. The two hear the drumming again, which directs them to the Jumanji board game. Alan sets up the game for the two of them to play, but Sarah jokingly rolls the dice and protests that she is too old for board games. When she does, a piece on the board begins to move by itself, and the fireplace begins to make odd noises. As a result of her fear, Sarah warns Alan not to take his turn. He rolls the dice without paying attention to her and gets the message, in the jungle, you must wait, until the dice read 5 or 8. As Alan is actually drawn into the game, Sarah recoils in fear as dozens of enormous bats swarm out of the fireplace and down the chimney. Sarah slams the door behind her as she flees the house while yelling. Nora Shepard and her niece and nephew, Judy and Peter, move into the now vacant parish home 26 years later. Since their parents died while on a skiing trip, Nora has been charged with raising the kids. Peter has dealt with this by becoming silent and introverted, while Judy has developed a pre-election for making up absurd lies. Following their exploration of the home, Judy and Peter ascend to the attic where they are startled by a bat. An exterminator is sent to investigate the home result, but nothing further is found. Judy points out a photo of an African fruit bat after numerous bat images are displayed to her. The exterminator claims that a girl who lived in the 1960s made a similar allegation about seeing a bat. The exterminator tells the children a story about how he thinks the owner of the house murdered his son, Alan, dissected the body and concealed the pieces inside the mansion's walls before leaving. The following day, Peter and Judy discover the Jumanji board game in the attic while Nora is away. They also hear the sounds of a tribal drum. Two game pieces mysteriously lock into place for them when they open it. After Judy's initial dice throw, enormous mosquitoes emerge from an upstairs window that is left open. When Peter rolls snake eyes, a swarm of insane monkeys invades the kitchen. Judy then reads the game board's message, which promises that after the game is over, everything will return to normal. After rolling doubles, Peter moves on to the next turn. When Peter rolls a five, the two are surprised to discover a lion inside their home. Their disbelief quickly doubles when Alan, who is now a guy of 40 dressed in a jungle outfit, appears. After capturing the lion in a bedroom, Alan thanks Judy and Peter for helping to set him free. When Alan inquires about his parents, 
Judy responds that she, Peter, and their Aunt Nora are the current homeowners of the home and that it is 1995. After rushing outdoors, Alan spots Carl in a police car. The monkeys from the kitchen steal Carl's car and take off while Carl runs after them demanding to know who Alan is. Then, Alan dashes off in an effort to locate his family. Soon after, Alan learns that the Paris shoe factory has been shut down. When Alan enters the factory, he encounters a homeless man who informs the group that Sam spent all of his time, resources, and income trying to locate Alan after he went missing. The homeless man points Alan toward the neighboring graveyard when Alan inquires about the whereabouts of the two elderly parishes. The kids try to convince Alan to help them finish the game when they return to the mansion with him after visiting his parents' graves. However, they quickly discover that the game must be played according to who is next. In order for the game to continue, Sarah must roll the dice because Alan was the second player to do so, followed by Judy and Peter. Unsure of where to go, the three arrive at Sarah's childhood home, only to discover a psychic residing there. Upon asking the psychic for assistance in locating Sarah, they discover that the psychic is Sarah. Alan and the kids carry Sarah back to the mansion after she faints upon seeing Alan. Sarah panics when she sees the game board and claims that what she thought she saw, Alan being drawn into the game, was a delusion and that Alan's father had actually murdered him and dismembered his body before burying it in the mansion's walls. Sarah is tricked into taking her turn by Alan which causes a lot of carnivorous plants to emerge. Alan then takes his turn as the gang flees to a different area of the home. The most lethal element of the game, a big game hunter from Jumanji named Van Pelt, who has been pursuing Alan for some time, appears during Alan's turn. Van Pelt doesn't give up until he runs out of ammo and then he goes off to acquire more. Because Van Pelt is modeled after Sam Parrish, the father of Alan, we can conclude that Jumanji was used to construct him. He calls Alan a sniveling, yellow coward for not facing Van Pelt and his rifle and acts as though his only goal in life is to seek Alan down and kill him. Sam Parrish appeared in an inflated nightmare once more. The trio moves on to the mansion's library, where Judy's turn triggers a gigantic animal stampede that emerges from the bookcase behind them. A gigantic white pelican takes the game and takes off in the ensuing pandemonium. Alan pursues it while leading the group. When Alan comes across the pelican beside a river and throws it a fish, the bird knocks the game into the water. After Peter successfully locates the game, everyone goes back to the house. Carl, though, shows up and leaves with Alan. After Alan has left, Peter admits that he tried to manipulate the dice in order to get the number he needed to win by dropping them. Peter consequently starts to change into a monkey. Finally revealing his identity to Carl in the police vehicle, Alan then tries to return to Judy, Peter, and Sarah. In the interim, Van Pelt has once more located the three after purchasing a DWU's S12 automatic shotgun. Peter nearly perishes in the animal stampede when the group is pursued into the center of the town. Van Pelt discovers Peter pinned inside a wrecked automobile, wrestles the game from him, and then makes his way to a bargain shop. In order to entice Alan to him, Van Pelt plans to trap Sarah and use both of them as bait, the game and Sarah. They are finally located at the store by Alan and Carl. Van Pelt is buried beneath a mountain of paint cans as Carl's car plows through the front of the shop. When the gang enters the house again, they discover that the interior has been overtaken by carnivorous plants. The following twist results in a monsoon flooding the house's main floor and the group being pursued by a sizable crocodile. Everyone makes their way to the attic, where Sarah waits her turn while the floor quickly sinks, nearly engulfing Alan. Alan is prevented from being sucked up by the floor when Judy throws the die, freezing the ground. When Peter rolls next, some enormous spiders materialize out of nowhere. When Judy stumbles into one of the plants, it needles her with a lethal barb as she tries to fend them off. When Sarah takes her turn, the parish house is split in half by an earthquake. When Alan is set free, the game also collapses to the ground. When Van Pelt shows there, Alan has managed to regain control of the game and is about to take his turn. Alan misplaces his dice. Van Pelt urges Alan to run, 
but Alan swears he will stop running and face his worries instead. The dice are finished rolling as he finishes, and Alan's piece lands in the middle of the board. Van Pelt requests Alan's parting remarks. As Alan and Sarah embrace and close their eyes, the game's name is called, and all the creatures and animals are drawn back into it. When they open their eyes once more, they are once again in Alan's home's parlor in 1969. Sam Parrish returns to retrieve a speech that he neglected while a noise is heard close. Alan apologizes for what he said before his father departed and goes to give his father a bear hug. Sam accepts Sam's apology and decides not to expel him. He also accepts blame for Carl's prototype sneaker being stuck in the manufacturing equipment. Alan becomes anxious about Judy and Peter when Sam departs. He is informed by Sarah that they do not yet exist. The game is then taken by the two, loaded down, and thrown into a nearby river. Then, after expressing her concern to Alan that their journey seems to be fading from her memory, Sarah chooses to kiss him in appreciation for his courage. The movie's epilogue takes us back to 1995. After getting married, Alan and Sarah are now expecting their first child. While his mother and father are away on a holiday, Alan is on the phone with his father while a Christmas party is being hosted at the parish house. Carl is at the gathering. Although the children are unaware of the prior experiences, Judy, Peter, and their parents have also been invited to the party by Alan and Sarah. Alan and Sarah are keen to offer the father of Judy and Peter a job in advertising with Paris Shoes. The parents, however, agree that they should postpone accepting until after their anticipated skiing holiday in the Canadian Rockies. And oh, both Sarah and Alan simultaneously exclaim. A couple of French females are seen near the movie's conclusion pondering about a peculiar drum beat they both hear while strolling along the beach. A few yards in front of them, the Jumanji board game lies concealed in the sand and waiting to ensnare its new recruits, 